And we're back. I'm um, going to do something a bit different this time. I decided to do the 2020 vinyl tag. Um, yeah, it's kind of late in the game, but my channel's new. I noticed Marty Worm did it. So did Analog Archives. I think Matt from the Dark Path did it as well, maybe. Um, yeah, so I figured I'd do it rather than just do another collection update for now. Um, before any of that, I'm going to give a shout-out to Pat over at Ground Zero Salem. Uh, he's given me some shout-outs, so I guess I owe it to him in that respect. But uh, he was also kind enough to have me on the live stream that him and a few other guys do every Friday night. Um, I'll give shout-outs to those guys, too. That's uh, Jason Hook from Get Into It with Jason Hook, uh, Marty Worm, Eric Bauer, uh, Ben Brainsmasher, and Matt from The Dark Path. They were all very welcoming, all cool guys. I'm sure you're subscribed to all of them, but if you're not, then you should immediately do that, or I will haunt you when I'm dead. It's the way it goes. Uh, anyways, yeah, you're going to see me reading a lot, because i got notes for this thing, because there's a lot of shit to cover, and I'm going to try and cover it fairly fast, because I don't know how long my uh, camera will last. Um, yeah, so, best find of 2019. That is going to have to go to a band from uh, Cambridge, Ontario, called The Onnits. Um, I first became aware of this record on an online blog, um, and I was surprised that I'd never heard of them before, because they're from Cambridge, which is an hour east of me. It's part of a Tri-City type thing between uh, Kitchener, Waterloo, and Cambridge. Um, it would fit in well on a Kill by Death record, or a compilation record. Uh, it's from 1981. It's goofy, just weirdo rock and roll. Uh, I wanted a copy, never ever seen one after I'd heard of it, of course. Um, and then uh, on some Facebook group I'm part of where we buy and sell records, somebody posted looking for Forgotten Rebels records, and then a guy responded and asked if they'd ever heard of the Onnits. And I responded and said, I had. I've been looking for the record for years now, but I've never ever seen a copy. He said he could probably help me out. Of course, it turns out that he used to be, he, or he was the drummer in this band. Um, so he hooked me up with a copy, I think for like 30 bucks or something, which was cool. And then go figure, a week later I found a copy for a dollar at an antique mall. So I have two now. I was going to re release this. It was never released with, uh, with a proper cover. And uh, he tried to get the masters. He contacted the guy that recorded them, who was still around, surprisingly. And uh, the guy didn't have them anymore. I know you can, you can do it off, you know, off vinyl and that, like, but that seems like too much fucking work for me, so... Whatever. It's going to be on the shelf for now. So yeah, it's uh, The Onnit's Weekend Wrestler and Gamma Rays on uh, Vinyl Dream Records, 1981. And it, it goes for like a couple hundred bucks on Discogs, so, you know, kind of scored for $30 and a dollar, respectively. Uh, favorite album 2019? I bought so many records in 2019, and it it's like, I mean, it depends on my mood. It goes day to day. Here's one I listen to often, though. It's, uh... Plastic Heads, Nowhere to Run. It's on Ugly Pop Records. Uh, you know, people who have played in, you know, Flesh Rag, Career Suicide, Hassler, uh, Brutal Nights. This follows closer to what Brutal Nights was doing. Kind of a New Bomb Turks type thing, like hard-hitting, like garagey, rock and roll, punk. It's just, yeah, it's a good record. It's catchy, solid. I'm told they have a... A new record pretty much ready to go, but I think COVID kind of fucked that up for now, so whatever. But, I mean, might not be my favorite album of 2019, but it's one I play quite a bit. Uh, novelty record. Barnes and Barnes. Fish Heads from 1978. It's on Lumania Records. It's uh, Art and Artie Barnes. I think they got kind of big on Dr. Demento. Art Barnes is actually Billy Moomy, who played uh, Will Robinson on uh, the... Uh, the original, the 1960s Lost in Space series. B-side is High School Gym. Just weird, synthy oddness. Um, I'm sure everyone's seen the video for Fish Heads. It was directed by Bill Paxton, actually. So, yeah, that's about as novelty record as you get. Unless you count, Oh Please Mr. Bigfoot, Put Me Down by Rex North on uh, King's International Record Company. Nothing on the back there. B-side song called Bigfoot. I think uh, A-side, the A-side, uh, oh please, Mr. Bigfoot, put me down, is, uh, I think that's talking about Albert Ostman, who was a prospector back in, I guess, maybe the 50s or something. He claims he was sleeping in a sleeping bag in the woods, and he was abducted by a Bigfoot, and then he got away. 
it made it, it was a big deal. I mean, I collect Bigfoot memorabilia, so I have lots of Bigfoot records. B-sides about a camping or a canoeing trip where Bigfoot killed some people and shit. It's kind of like a sullen spoken word piece. It's one you hardly ever see, though. Uh, homage cover. Cover pays homage to another artist. I'm going to go right here with a band from Boston. It's on Collapse Records from 2005. Soul Swallower with the homage to uh, Bathory's self-titled LP with the goat on it. Um, this was this was a special cover made for a weekend tour they did up here to, uh, to Ontario. Uh, I saw them, I want to say it was in Hamilton, but it may have been in Toronto, but I think it was in Hamilton. And they had they played with like Brain Handle and I think Shark Attack played and stuff like that. I don't know. It was a long time ago. But uh, yeah, there's members of like every awesome early 2000s Boston hardcore band in there. Like, you know, Mind Eraser, Innumerable Forms, Boston Strangler. Like, it's just, it's a heavy hitter cast. Uh, yeah. And that's what the regular cover looks like. B-side deep cut. I, that's just a dumb question. Here's some new records that I didn't intend on talking. Atomic Rooster headline news. You know, B-side, Dance of Death. Sure, deep cut. Something funky. I went with something that's a little different, because I'm sure a lot of people showed Parliament or, you know, Rick James or Funkadelic or whatever. I'm going with the Detroit band. This one's from uh, 1976. Um, it's on Buddha Records. Sins of Satan. Thou shalt not boogie forever. Oh, wait. Thou shalt boogie forever. My mistake. Cool cover. Kind of ventures a little close to disco sometimes, but it's definitely funky. And it's one you don't see too often. So. Uh, weird Shelf Buddies. Records next to each other that make an odd pair. Yeah, I got a good one there. 1983 Attic Records version of Merciful Fate's Melissa. Obviously, well, in my opinion, one of the best metal, well, probably the best metal band ever. It's my favorite metal band ever. Uh, King Diamond at the Helm, evolved from a band called The Brats from Copenhagen, Denmark. Uh, you know, satanic lyrics, occult imagery, yada, yada, yada. And that ended up right beside a gentleman by the name of Merrill Womack. Merrill was a pilot. He uh, crashed. He was burned and disfigured in the fire. Uh, in the ambulance, apparently, he sung the whole way to the hospital, claiming that he didn't go into shock and that the music and the Lord, you know, kept him from going into shock and dying. He took that as his cue to be an operatic kind of, you know, religious, gospel y singer. Um, there's a documentary on YouTube about him called He Restoreth My Soul, which is pretty interesting. Like, I, If I recall correctly, he made like a, a, a you know, a ten foot cross in his backyard out of the fuselage of the plane that he almost died in. Like, just kooky shit. He also started the company that, uh, that pipes the music into funeral homes, because apparently he was an undertaker as well. So, yeah, I don't know. Errol Womack. I collect weird religious records, too. Um, I was there, a band I've seen here you get two for one. It's Left for Dead and Acrid. Left for Dead, of course, from Hamilton, Ontario. Acrid from the suburb of Toronto. I believe they're from Oakville. Uh, yeah, the great Buzzsaw or Buzzsaw shaped uh, record. It's on No Idea. Um, Left for Dead, punishing hardcore band. Clever lyrics. Chris Colahan would go on to be in, you know, Cursed, and now he's in Sect. He was in The Swarm. Yada yada yada. Um, acrid, more of a you know, kind of like a power violence screamo, even though I hate that term type thing. Um, both bands were really good. I saw Left 4 Dead a lot more than, than Acrid because they were from Hamilton, which is closer to me than Toronto. Um, and plus, they played out a lot more. Uh, I'll also have to, to say Gordon Soli Motherfuckers, who I saw in a basement in Buffalo. This is the Chair Shop Politics EP on River on Fire. Um, I saw him with uh, No Time Left, Boulder, and Trapped Inside. I think maybe, yeah, Countdown to Oblivion. Maybe No Time Left didn't play. 
But whatever. Gordon Soli motherfuckers are awesome. Tony Urba doing vocals. You know, he was in Nine Shocks Tear, uh, Face Value, other bands. He's swinging from the rafters, just being a fucking lunatic. One of the best hardcore bands I've ever seen. So, yeah, definitely making Cleveland proud, that's for sure. Uh, wish I had an OG copy but have a repress. Well, like we mentioned in the Soul Swallower there, I'm going to go with the first Bathory. This is just a black mark repress, but I would love to have the Yellow Goat original pressing, but I don't want to have to go get a bank loan to get one. So, yeah, you know the drill. I talked about it in the last video. Swedish band, you know, pretty much laid the blueprint for black metal as it, as it is now, I guess. Whatever. Great celebrated band. Raw, gnarly. Uh, discography you own. You own all the major releases of an artist or artists you own the most of. Uh, yeah, I'm going with uh, Career Suicide from Toronto. Um, they've been around for, you know, since about 2000. Uh, they were there at the, the early onset of the, the 80s hardcore revival. Uh, they're really good at it. Their live shows are fantastic. They're distinctive because Martin's voice doesn't sound like anybody else's. They're all great guys. Yeah, solid band. So, um, yeah, we'll start out with uh, pre-career suicide. This is Fuck Jonah. Oh, fuck Jonah and Fuck You. The demo. This is, you know, I got this, uh, my old band played with Fuck Jonah and uh, a bunch of other bands. They live and bleed for me and all this. At a uh, record store slash bookstore slash workspace in Toronto's Kensington Market called uh, uh, Who's Emma? We played like a, a weekend fest that they had there, so I grabbed that tape. And here's their uh, their 2001 demo. Uh, again, we played with them for this uh, at another Toronto venue called Q Bar. And they threw these out into the crowd, so I got one. Um, where'd that fucking list go? Ah, well, I guess I'm winging it. So I'll just I'll just pile through this. Here's the first seven inch on uh, Kangaroo Records. Chris Colahan on drums for this one. Uh, here's the SARS seven inch, which is probably the most well known thing because everybody seems to know the song SARS. So now, uh, Signals on Slasher Records. Here's a an alternate copy of Signals that I had for some reason. I don't think it's particularly made for anything, just an alternate cover. Uh, here is the picture disc version of Signals. Here's the uh, Cherry Beach EP. It's the UK Ireland Tour 2008 version of it on Sewer Side. It's uh, personalized white labels. Give me a fucking Ox Baker in respect to my old band. And, uh, yeah, Fuck a Brown Knuckler, which is in reference to a goofy project that I do now and again. Uh, here's the Machine Response 7 inch, which is, I guess, the last thing they released. This is self released. This one's hand numbered out of 250. And then here's their, <coughs> their first LP, which was on uh, Ugly Pop. Great record. So they're split with a band from Australia called Jed Whitey, who is more of a kind of a garage punk band. That's on uh, Deranged. There's a repress of the first LP on Parts Unknown. It's got the uh, embossed logo there. This is a Japanese tour version of the Invisible Eyes record. The Obi strip, clear vinyl, white label. Here's a 12 inch repress of the first 7 inch on Deranged. This is also a 12 inch repress of the first 7 inch called Hello Europe Coming My Way. It's obviously for a European tour. It's just some copies glued to, uh, to this. It's on. Uh, deranged as well, but must have had something to do with New Wave Records in France. Maybe they were helping with the tour over there or something. 
There's the uh, attempted suicide. Great fucking record. There's the uh, Japanese version, Japanese tour version of uh, attempted suicide. I think this is limited to like 100 copies. Here's the mach Machine Response LP. It's on uh, deranged, as most of their stuff was, or is. And here's the European version of the Machine Response record on Static Shock. So that is my career suicide. I'm missing one thing. It's the uh, Live at WFMU cassette, which one person on Discogs owns. So I don't know how widespread that thing is, but if you have a copy and want to get rid of it, let me know. Uh, unique Center Label. This is one I, I don't pay much attention to Center Labels, but this is a band from Ottawa. It's from 1971, I think. 1970. It's a band called Canada Goose. It's the Higher and Higher, uh, backed with Answer Man single. It's on Tonsil Records. I just always like the picture. It's fucking hilarious. So, yeah, it makes perfect sense. Um, yeah, it's it's just shitty late 60s fucking pop music. Maybe like a bubblegummy version of the Guess Who or something. Yeah, it was, it was a thrift store for a quarter. I didn't know what it was. I took a chance. Um, next question. Pre-band, album or band that features someone who went on to be famous. That's an easy one. It's uh, the Roadkill, 12-inch by Capital Punishment. Uh, Capital Punishment was from New York, started in 1979. Uh, the, the LP was released in 82, but this was released in 2018. It's a repress on uh, a label called Captured Tracks. Capital Punishment is a really weird, arty, oddball band. They're not particularly good. Songs kind of drag on too long. I mean, for people that are just fans of totally weird music, they might like it more than me, but eh, it's interesting, but it's nothing I listen to a lot. But the uh, the celebrity aspect of this is that the drummer uh, is a teenage Ben Stiller, so you don't really get a lot more famous than that. I mean, whatever, at least in punk rock. Uh, music, musical book or movie you'd recommend? Well, with movies, I'm going to go to the old standby and say Suburbia. I'm sure you know anybody that's into punk seen this. It's a bunch of punk kids squatting in a in a abandoned you know neighborhood tract. Um, live performances by the Vandals, D.I. and T.S.O.L. Uh, you know, Flea from the Red Hot Chili Peppers is in this. Whatever, blah, blah, blah. I got the DVD, too. Um, you know, just a classic punk movie. Um, also got the, uh, the soundtrack LP, which features the bands I just mentioned, but it also has Alex Gibson doing the instrumental stuff. He was formerly in the band The Bee People, who was... Uh, one of the weird bands on Let Them Eat Jelly Beans Comp. Uh, that that was released in 83, but the movie was released in 82, so uh, whatever. It's on Enigma. And next up... Oh, well, yeah, I guess I'll do a book since I got one right beside me. It's uh, Tomorrow Is Too Late, which is uh, basically a crazy fucking reference guide for, uh, you know, all things old Toronto hardcore. You know, like there's so much shit that you know I, I didn't know a lot of the stuff in here it's definitely a, a work of fucking love by these people um Simon from Ugly Pop was uh was involved with that and he released the 7 inch that goes along with it uh which has uh, Micro Edge Sudden Impact Direct Action Negative Gain Sons of Ishmael Chronic Submission Angry Thalidomide Babies Creative Zero Dead End and MSI more stupid initials um it says, uh, these songs were rescued from ancient cassettes. The sound quality is appropriately raw. I have no problem with that. Um, they have a history of Toronto metal that's due out this fall. I'm not sure if it's going to have a 7-inch with it, but it would be super cool if it did. Uh, underrated album. Here's one I've loved forever. It's a band from Belgium. It's on uh, Attic Records. It's from 1984. It's Black Widow, Street Fighter. That fucking cover is hilarious um this band sounds like judas priest but with a speed metal thing going on and a punk vibe too this is so good super energetic it sounds really enthusiastic 
and it's just it's one that no one ever talks about I don't I don't know why like I fucking love this maybe I'm just stupid but that's a great record uh, batting average artist band who consistently makes good albums in my opinion it's a band from Denton Texas <clears throat> called the Marked Men there's their self-titled record they're uh, not a pop punk band but they're a melodic punk band for sure Nasally vocals, really well-written songs, a lot of down-strummed guitars, a lot of really fast 4-4 drums, like Robot style. Uh, just super good. All the records, you know, just, they never disappoint. There's the On the Outside one. Um, Fix My Brain. And Ghosts. Uh, members of this band playing... Tons of other bands, Radioactivity, Bad Sports, uh, Mind Spiders, Potential Johns, High Tension Wires, you know, and all of those bands are good. So, I mean, if you're if you're into like melodic kind of punk that doesn't fall into the, you know, pop punk trappings or the, you know, the Fat Records kind of skate punk stuff. Uh, same album, different cover. Here I'm going back to Cleveland. A band called the Darvisets. Your planet sucks. There's the cover of that fucker. It's on uh, Painkiller Records out of Boston. Um, this one, it's a uh, silk screen for, or it's, yeah, not necessarily, yeah, screen like a UFO. And here's one with same cover, but it's with crop circles and then getting to the different cover aspect of it completely different version this cover screened and uh, uh it's just the black one that was pretty anticlimactic um they're a a weird punk band that sings a lot about like conspiracy theories and stuff and they're real goofy and some of them went on to be in like folded shirt and you know, the ruiners and stuff like that so good good band uh an album you bought cheap that's now worth money this is going to be a weird one but the today album by or the today lp by pat's people it's uh, <laughs> a band from london ontario that were put together by their pastor um I just, I saw the thrift store for a dollar. I had a feeling about it. Just, I was like, I can't pass that by for a dollar, you know. I thought it might be one of those, like, awesome girl group sensation type things or something. But turns out that they're one step up from the shags. They sound like they're almost going to fall asleep when they're singing these songs. Um, but uh, this thing is a, is kind of a holy grail in the world of religious recordings. And it's it's worth, like, you know, a few hundred bucks. So, and I found several copies of that now, so I know what to look for. Um, favorite drummer? Eh, you know, if you can play drums, you're my favorite drummer, because I'm terrible at it. But, I mean, if you want to go, like, old stuff, like Lucky Lair from the Circle Jerks, fucking crazy. Dude from Christ on a Crutch was great. Um, you know, like, I mean, you could say Tom, or uh, Dave Lombardo, and, you know, Gene Hoglin and all that stuff. And, yeah, they're great drummers, but I don't want to say the same shit as everybody else. Um, one guy that's a good drummer is uh, Dave Witte, who's now in Municipal Waste. I don't like his stuff as much in that band, but when he was in Discordance Axis, that fucking blew my mind. That guy's great. Uh, which leads me into the next question, Turning 20, an album Turning 20 in 2020. And that is Discordance Axis, the inalienable Dreamless on Hydra Head. Uh, crazy, discordant, fucking blasting, screaming insanity. John Chang is a fucking awesome vocalist. Um, just killer grindcore. And I don't know. I just like Dave Woody's style of drumming, So at least at this point in his life. Uh, municipal Waste stuff is, you know, totally different style, and I don't like it nearly as much. And lastly, uh, trilogy of albums. Three solid albums back to back to back from the same artist or bands uh, should be a connecting thread. I'm going with a Dutch band called Funeral Oration. Now, the early stuff is, like, kind of tuneless thrash, like, just, you know, early European hardcore. 
and that stuff's awesome too. But then in the '90s, they went onto Hopeless Records, which is kind of like a skate punk epitaphy type thing, and they released three LPs. So you had this one, self-titled, and then you had Believer. And then you had survival. And uh, I'd say the common theme here is kind of like a midlife crisis type thing or like a, a fear of growing old alone type thing. It's it's a very, his lyrics are very desolate, and very like, you know, talking about being old. There's a lot of like, you know, celebrating the fact that you're still in the punk at kind of an advanced age, I guess. But uh, yeah, it's it's more of like a psychological thing with his lyrics that I think binds all those those LPs together. Um, sadly, the singer died. I've heard different accounts of how he died, so I'm not sure. Um, the drummer also died. Uh, I, I, I think I read that he, like, fell down the stairs when he was drunk or something and died. But I, I could be wrong. I mean, there's rumor, like, I wasn't there, so I don't fucking know. But, uh, yeah. But that band, they're, you know, very melodic at this point in their in their career, as it were. Um, very melodic. Very well-written songs. His voice kind of sounds like a clinically depressed Jello Biafra, in a way. Without the talking, it's like actually all singing, but his voice has that kind of waver that Jello has. So I don't know. A lot of people just hated him as soon as they started doing that stuff, but I like that shit lots. It's super catchy. I can throw it on, and it's just, you know, it's there. So, anyways... That's the Vital Tag 2020. I probably ripped through it faster than I should have, but I tried to do this once before, and it completely fucking ran out of time on my camera. So, whatever. Till next time. Enjoy. Bye.